Welcome to episode 75 of the BCF ORG podcast, The Business of Business. I'm Brian Fisher. In the previous episode, 74, our guest was Mike Dallas Peterson discussing business growth. This podcast series focuses on the various subjects and topics to help you run a successful, profitable business. They're approximately 10 to 15 minutes long, so you can listen while commuting. Hopefully, you'll find one or two takeaways to implement per episode. Today's episode discusses building a personal brand. Our guest is Chelly Phillips, founder and owner of Successfully Ever After, based out of Newman, Georgia. Chelly Phillips is a sweet tea sipping, sassy Southerner with a passion for helping dynamic, driven, career minded professionals write their own success stories. She's a coach, corporate trainer, and motivational speaker, as well as the author of two award winning books When in Doubt, Delete It, and Get Noticed, Get Hired. Chelly's Successfully Ever After formula is designed to land you in an ideal career perfectly matched to your skill set that feels more like get to than got to. For over 20 years, she's used her first-rate public relations and communication skills to help countless people create an authentic personal brand designed to get them noticed and hired. She also leads corporate trainings about creating a company culture that encourages employee support, growth, and community. Chelly's on a mission to help others tune in to what makes them great, package it properly, and use their existing skill set to find the path to their highest potential. Let's welcome Chelly Phillips. Chelly, welcome to the BCF ORG podcast, the business of business. Thanks for having me, Brian. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for joining us today. Chelly, I'm always interested in people's stories. Uh, what's your background in becoming the founder and owner of Successfully Ever After? So I say it's a hodgepodge of things that kind of happened, that kind of threw it all together, and this is where it ended up. But I began as a journalist, so I was super interested in learning what made people tick. What are their stories? How do, you know, like what's the story behind the story? So I'll say that probably started my interest in trying to figure out what really made people stand out and why did they accomplish the things that they accomplished. And from there, I moved into corporate PR and I've worked in PR and marketing for about 30 years with an electric utility, a couple of electric utilities, actually. And then on the side, I did a lot of work with a sorority on a college campus in Alabama. So I had about 200 women that came through every quarter, and I generally worked with the leadership in that. And it was got really interesting there for a while because we would see them walk across the stage, get their diploma, and then they would go to find a job. And some of them did, but the ones that didn't, and they went to go by and do what I call like get by jobs, whether it was retail work until they could find something in their field, or maybe they were baristas or whatever it was that they, they got by until they could actually find that job in their career. When they were getting those final offers, then they were coming in five to $8,000 less than what someone who just walked across the stage and got their diploma came in. And so it was very ironic to me that somebody with some actual work experience, somehow their education had gotten devalued because they had been working in something else. And so I got really interested in how do we present ourselves? How do we market ourselves and use that with those college women or recently graduated college women on how do I build myself up and how do I brand myself in the interviews so that I can use that experience as a selling point instead of it being a detriment? You know, I've worked with people. I've showed up on time. I'm dependable. I've managed money. I've managed projects. I've managed co-worker relationships, all these things that we expect kids to do when they come into the workplace, and it wasn't being talked about. So basically going, okay, let me help and let's see what we can do. So from interviewing to resume writing to cover letter writing, all of that kind of stuff kind of played into that. And then I had my own career change after 40. And so that was a whole new look on things. It's like I realized, 
oh, okay, fine. So I should have been keeping up with my resume. I hadn't been doing that. I'd been telling all my kids and all my college students to do all this kind of thing. But you think you're in a career you're going to stay in forever after you've been someplace 20 years. You're vested in the retirement and all this other kind of stuff. But when a management change happens, you never know what's going to happen. So having to re-prepare and re-enter the workplace myself, I was like, you know, it's changed a lot since I was 21 and I went out for my first interviews and things. So learning all about the process of how we market ourselves online and do all that kind of stuff really kind of set me up for this business that I have now where I help people brand themselves and find the positions and opportunities that they are more aligned for. Well, that's really uh, interesting. Somebody who's graduated college with a year or two work experience is offered less money than somebody that hasn't been in the workforce. Yeah, it was crazy. I said, I really couldn't believe it when I was coming back and seeing what they were showing me and everything else. Of course, after a few years, you get attached to these girls. Anyway, they become part of your extended family. And I'm like, oh, no, this is not right. We're not having this. We got to fix this. (laughs) Oh, good for you. Our topic today is building a personal brand. What is a personal brand? So easy way is I like to say it's what people think of you when you're not in the room to tell them yourself. It covers everything from your online presence to how you are on the phone to how your email correspondence interpreted, the network that you build. All of that is your personal brand. It's what people think about you. And so you have to be very careful when you're building it to make sure that you're highlighting the values, the skills, the opportunities that you want to be bringing towards yourself when you're putting it out there for the world to see. Well, you've probably answered my next question about why do we need a personal brand? So the answer that I love to give people with that is that people aren't going to pay you what you think you're worth. They only pay you what they think you're worth. And the really cool thing is that you can control what they think. And so you do that by building your personal brand. It becomes your differentiator. It becomes basically the promise that if somebody says, I'm going to bring you in and I'm going to put you to work in this spot, or I'm going to let you run this division, or I'm going to let you lead this opportunity, that They think when they're putting you there, you're bringing that promise of a certain set of skills, a certain set of values to that organization that you're going to put to work for them to help move it towards success. We're speaking with Chelly Phillips, founder and owner of Successfully Ever After. Chelly, following up on the previous question, how do we go about building the personal brand designed for career success? So I think it starts with a clear vision that you have for yourself. You got to do a little bit of self-reflection. What is it that you want your brand to stand for? Just like a company or a product has its brand. And, and, you know, if I say Timex and Rolex, you're going to think, okay, they're both watches. They both tell time, but they both have different impressions. One is high dollar. One is the rich and the famous have them. One is it's like a success, you know, milestone. The other is something you buy at Kmart or Walmart and you just get by, it tells time but they really have the same features. So what makes them stand out? So you have to do the same thing as a person is you have to be very clear on what you want that image to be. And then from there, it's about devising a visibility plan. How are you going to, how are you going to put that out there for people to see and find you? And then it's about building that online presence that mimics those same things. You want to be saying the same thing and showing the same things in different places so that no matter how they find you, they're getting the same message about you. Well, speaking about online presence, uh, LinkedIn is very popular. What's the high value real estate on our LinkedIn profile? So first thing I'm going to say, it's all about the photos. You want a great image of yourself on there. You know, like don't cut yourself out of picture and have weird things in the side or that kind of stuff. Get a good mug shot of yourself, good on face headshot, nice crisp background so that you're going to stand out. And most importantly, smile. People connect with a smile. It's proven that profile pictures that are smiling and they're engaging are about 40% more attractive to people that will actually stop and look at that because of that picture. And then don't forget about the banner image that's behind that. When you see LinkedIn, it's the image that shows up behind the headshot and where everything else is usually blue if you haven't done anything with that for yourself. But use that to highlight something that's important to you, something that you've accomplished, something about that work that you're doing. Even if it's a quote that means something to you, put it up there so that people get an idea of who you are. And then there's the headline and then, of course, the summary area. And I think the summary area is probably the most important place on that because that's where you can build that real connection with people. 
And let's face it, connection is all about emotion. And so this is where you want to be that first person. You want to share a little bit inside about what matters to you, how you got where you got, and why it matters on the path that you're taking. Shelly, what results have you seen with people that have actually implemented your approach and your recommendations? So I'll tell you a quick story about a client of mine that I had. He worked in finance and had a management change in. And of course, he was he was getting closer to retirement age. And he decided, I think I'm going to go ahead and make the switch now. And he wanted to get into real estate. And as we were talking about why he wanted to get into real estate, one of the things that he really decided or what he was came out in, in our conversation is that he wanted to focus on like second properties for people, not necessarily their first homes or anything like that, but rental property or vacation property. And so we got to talking and I'm asking, okay, so why is that? Why does that matter to you? Why is that? You, you know, like, he said, well, he grew up. He remembered he used to go with his dad to take care of their rental property. He would do some of the odds and end work with him and everything. But that rental property is what paid for all the family vacations and all the extras that happened. And so he associated the rental property with the income to do the things that mattered to the family. And so we were working on that. And I told him, you have got to incorporate that into your story in that summary so that people know that this is just not something that you just decided willy nilly that you're going to go do, that this is something that matters to you, that you've lived, that you experience, and you know why they're doing these things. It's about building that connection like I talked about. And he's become very successful in that niche market of finding second properties for people because of he's doing it. And he gets a lot of connections through LinkedIn because people see his story and they relate to it and they go, oh, he gets it. He knows what I'm trying to do. So other than the usual, you know, being able to beef it up so that you get some different promotional opportunities or maybe some new sales leads or even some great connections that can open some doors for you, it can have some really tangible results for you in the business world. We're speaking with Chelly Phillips, founder and owner of Successfully Ever After. Chelly, is there anything I've not asked that you'd like to add? Yeah, just one thing is like, you know, a lot of times people, especially entrepreneurs think, okay, my business has a brand, but it's really important for the person leading that business to have their brand as well. Because you are, while you may be the face of that business, you're also the person that's setting the tone for it. You want people to know the values that you have, which is honesty, integrity, whatever it is that matters to you. You want them to know that this is who I am as the owner, and this is the foundation that I've built the company on. That'll also help you with hiring the right people, because people look to the owner to see who's managing this process, who's putting it out there for us. And so you can really set yourself up for success, not only in the business, business world, but as the leader of that organization, and you'll be able to attract the right people to do it. So I think it's important not only for necessarily a job seeker or someone like that to do that, but also the owner of the company to become that face and be able to put out there why I'm doing the things that I do and why that matters. How can people get in contact with you, Chelly? So I'm on LinkedIn, of course, is one of the platforms that you can find me. You just use my name and it should pop up. And then my website, ChellyPhillips.com. But probably the best thing that you could do is if you're interested in building your brand is I have a free resource that you can download that'll actually walk you through building that branding statement, something that you can use in that summary area of your LinkedIn profile. And that's on my website, ChellyPhillips.com backslash free dash resources backslash brand guide. And I think you'll drop it in the show notes for everybody so they don't have to remember that long address. <laughs> I, I definitely will. And we should probably point out that Chelly is spelled C-H-E-L-L-I-E. -L -L -E. Yep. A little bit different. <laughs> a little different. Chelly, thank you for joining us today on the BCF ORG podcast, The Business of Business. Thanks so much. I've enjoyed our time. Me too. My sincere thanks to Chelly Phillips for joining us today. Managing the performance of your company is one of the most important things you do as a leader. This podcast is on over 20 directories. Subscribe or follow wherever you get your podcast. In search, type BCFORG. Be sure to leave a space between BCF and ORG. Feel free to share this podcast with people who you think may benefit. A strong rating of these podcasts would be appreciated. If you'd like to reach out to me with any questions, comments, ideas, or potentially be a guest like Chelly, please go to bcforg.com. There's a red Contact Us button in the middle of the homepage. A LinkedIn symbol is on the upper right. 
Click on that if you'd like to see my profile. All the podcasts are available by clicking on the website podcast page in the reference bar. These podcasts will be released the first and third Tuesday each month. In the next episode, 76, our guest will be Satam Katimi discussing Are You User-Centric? In business, running a successful, profitable business is the ultimate scorecard. You are never done and can always be better. It tends to be more fun than work, frustrating at times, but can be very rewarding. From BCFORG Corp., I'm Brian Fisher, wishing you the best. Thanks. Thanks.